guys, welcome back to Dane Harden Martial Arts on YouTube. Um, in this next sequence in our Taekwondo Basics, we're going to get into some striking. So in Lesson 7, Lesson 8, 9, and 10, we're going to be teaching some concepts of jab, reverse punch, back fist, snap kick, and side kick. So please stick around, and if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Dane Harden Martial Arts on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. this idea of a jab. Um, when I shoot the jab, I want to be in a fighting stance posture like Bruce is in right now. Most of the weight's on Bruce's back leg, about 60%. Both legs are bent. Notice his hands are up about the level of his temples. Elbows are in. So this is really borrowing a lot from my kickboxing experiences, the classical jabs in olden times we used to throw them. And I like to refer to this theory as the theory of the turtle. You want the turtle's head down in the shell. So if I'm in my fighting posture, my hands are up, when I shoot my jab, a good goal to remember is that your shoulder goes up to cover your J point. As the hand goes out, the shoulder goes up. As the hand comes back, the shoulder goes down. So I'll throw just a couple of jabs, nice and easy. So we're here. I'll do that slow as it's coming through. Roll up, and then I'm coming back. Notice that my body is slightly turning as I throw the jab. The switch sides first. So same thing now, jab on the opposite position. So again, hands are up. I like my elbows in. I tend to keep my hands open because I am also an Aikidoist. So if I can grab things, I'll do that. So done slowly, when I shoot, the shoulder comes up, covers this angle of my chain point. Notice that my head came down here, chin is tucked, I'm moving this arm out of the way, and then I come back. So when I'm shooting these, and back. When I shoot the technique slowly, here, and back. So that's it. Slowly, rolling the strike out. The jab, straight in, back fist off at the angle. So if I do that quickly, from here. And retract. So the next inner punching sequence is reverse punch. You can also do reverse jab or reverse back fist. I'll demonstrate a reverse back fist and a reverse punch in this striking series. So when I set to my fighting stance posture, again, hands are up. I'm throwing my reverse punch. I like to tell students, it's like they're throwing a baseball, where they really wind up and they twist through. Knee comes in, tucks to cover the groin. So same thing, when I'm here, drive my punch. Elbow is tucked in tight, covering, I'm on guard. Here's my punch position, and then I come straight back, okay? So reverse punch here, back. Same thing, other side. I am here. I like to cover through this region and then come back. I don't need the arm out when I throw a reverse punch. I'm pulling it straight back. At the end is the twist, bring it back. Twist, bring it back. If I'm going to use this as a back fist, let me change positions. I set it up exactly the same way, coming through for reverse punch. We're going to take it slightly out of angle and throwing it here on this side of Bruce's head. Boom. What's nice about that is one, two, I can start to cross and then I slowly get into some kickboxing skills. So that's back fist, reverse back fist, reverse punch. Thanks, Bruce. In this section, we're talking about application or applicability. There's lots of discussion that I see all the time and endless amounts of energy and discussions are wasted on that doesn't work, this doesn't work, that won't work, this won't work. Okay, whatever. Um, but rather than discussions like that, let me explain applicability from an experience-based story, okay? 
So I was deployed with the military back in the late 90s to a place called Camp Bonsteel in Kosovo. Um, I was there as a medical guy and we were on patrols. When we were out on patrols, if there were injuries within a local population and there wasn't someone there who could care for those injuries, we were allowed to render care as part of a humanitarian service for our being in their country. Um, this individual was July in Kosovo, which is extremely hot, um, had gone down and they had had a heat injury, pretty obviously. So I went ahead and I started an IV, an intravenous line, to give them fluids. At the same time, popped some ice packs, stuffed them in the groin area, in the armpits, and over the carotids in order to actively cool that individual. They were conscious and they did speak enough English that we could communicate. Um, I asked them about allergies. They didn't really have any allergies. The individual started to shiver. Um, shivering causes the core temperature to go up because it's muscular contraction, right? So I gave the individual a little bit of some a Valium, and Valium helps to stop the shivering because most of the thermoreceptors are within the skin. That's a medical story of understanding the different tools that I had in my toolbox, fluid, ice packs, medication, in order to have a desired outcome, reduce the temperature, and get that individual out of a life-threatening situation, which was a heat injury. The story gets more interesting at this point because the Marshall application as I was doing all this, of course, it draws a crowd. I had personal security guys there, MPs. They were both looking in that direction. From this direction, two LIPs, local indigenous persons, started to move aggressively towards where we were at. Um, we had had reports that in that area, there were uh, attacks on soldiers. Uh, these individuals were trying to take weapons. We had some training on weapons retention. I saw the individuals rapidly approaching, not more than 15 or so feet. Um, as I stood up, the individuals were really closing fast, almost at a run. I threw a kick. I deliberately drug my foot through the dirt, debris, sand, grit, rocks, and gravel that I was standing on in order to launch a bunch of that from my combat boot at the individual who was in the lead. It had the desired applicable effect where he brought his hands up, closed his eyes, and turned his head. That was enough for me to enter Perimi, to use my keto term, to go to an arm bar and a lock, take the individual down. By that time, my MPs, my PSD, personal security detachment, had noted what was going on. They came around, the other individual who was with him ran the other way immediately when he saw my response. Um, and the guy was zip-tied and taken away to be uh, questioned or have a discussion about what it was that he was doing. So that's understanding what's in your environment, having good situational awareness, understanding what are the tools in your toolbox, rock, dirt, debris, gravel, a kick that I borrowed from Taekwondo, an armbar that I borrowed from Aikido, a takedown that I borrowed from Jiu Jitsu, and Ziplocs that we probably borrowed from Lowe's department store. So when you hear stuff about this doesn't work and that doesn't work, I want you to take that with a grain of salt. It's not that the individual arts don't work. Most martial arts have very valuable applicable skills that you can learn. Um, it's usually the practitioner who's had very little practical experience, if any, in deploying those weapons in an applicable manner. In the next section, we're going to talk about heavy bag striking and look at how to apply some of these basic strikes that we're learning about uh, in a useful fashion. Striking. Most of the time, if we spend our entire martial art experience throwing punches in the air, <laughs> we're really missing a lot. Something as simple as a wave master can help to build strength on impact, builds the supportive structure, the tendons, and really improves in your ability to deliver power. In this section, we're going to introduce the concept of maneuver and mobility. I like to teach my students the clock method or directional method. I've used painter tape to tape an X or a plus sign 
on the floor, depending upon the number of students that you have, you can take these throughout your dojo. And this is sort of an introductory lesson on this basic striking and basic kicking on the concept of maneuver, which I think is really overlooked quite often in martial arts. What I like to tell my students is to assume their position in the X. So they're gonna put one foot in one quadrant, another foot in another quadrant, and that's gonna set them up in a certain position. They can have them on both sides of the same quadrant, both sides of the same quadrant, step into opposite quadrants, cross step into opposite quadrants, cross step into opposite quadrants. That's one utilization for this. If I call this out as a clock method, which is a fun game, I'm gonna say movement to 12 o'clock, so they're gonna move forward into a 12 o'clock position. If I say move back to six o'clock, they move rear to a six o'clock position. If I say move to your three o'clock, and this is where the confusion usually comes in, they're gonna to move to a three o'clock position on their clock, three o'clock. And from here I say move to nine o'clock, they move to nine o'clock. That's the clock method. And you can create circling by calling out things like 1.30, 5.30, 7.30, you know, whatever you choose. The other method is the directional method, which is easier for beginners to catch on to. Again, I'm in my quadrants, my hands are up, I say move forward, move rear, move left, move right. And the good thing to emphasize on this is that as they move forward, it's the forward foot that initiates movement. As they move rear, rear foot initiates movement. If I move right, right foot initiates movement. And if I move left, left foot initiates that movement. You can also practice switching between positions. Have them check their quadrants, make sure that they're in the proper quadrants in the square, and then they simply switch. This is switching in place here. Switch, switch, switch. I can switch in advance as well here. Switch, switch back. Switch, I've advanced. Switch, I switch back. I can also move rear, switch, switch forward, switch rear. So I'm starting to understand how to apply some maneuver with something as simple as some painter's tape in an X on the floor, beginning to understand concepts of mobility. There'll be a lot more of this to follow in future lessons. So next in the sequence is gonna be the op chubby, which is a snap kick. So when I throw a snap kick at Bruce, I wanna focus on center line. We've introduced this concept once or twice in the past. But if Bruce turns towards the camera, center line is gonna be groin, umbilicus, solar plexus, throat, and face. So those are my center line of attack points. For Bruce, those are gonna be his center line of defense. So when we say center line of defense and or center line of offense, we're really talking about the same targeting strategies on punches and kicks, which is this entire center line. If Bruce turns around 180, it's gonna actually be the exact same thing, the back of the head, back of the neck, spinal column, coccyx. You can attack the arms and the legs, but those would not be center line attacks. So that's the concept of center line of defense, center line of attack. So Bruce, you'll turn this way. So our first kick is just gonna be from a natural stance position. Rather than starting from a fighting stance posture, which gives away a lot of telegraphing because obviously you've assumed the fighting posture, you must know something about fighting. I wanna be in just a natural position. And when I'm throwing my kick, my hands are gonna come up with the kick. And I keep my hands up after I've thrown the kick. The knee chambers tightly, chambers tightly, and then, kicks to the center, kicks to the center. I should be able to kick groin, solar plexus, belt knot, chin, all without too much drop. Want to be able to do it with both legs, so I'm here, kick, kick, kick. Notice my hands, kind of in what I call a neutral boxing posture, I'm trying to keep my hands up and on guard. So that's a basic snap kick.
So in this section, we're going to talk about introducing Yap Chagi. Yap Chagi. Yap Chagi is a sidekick. In sidekick, there's really three stages to it. We lift, pivot, and kick. If I'm standing in a natural she's in tie position facing the camera, and Bruce is my target, <laughs> you move back a little bit. You can sit right where you are, Bruce. So when I'm here, I'm going to lift my knee as if I'm throwing a snap kick at the camera. When I lift, as the weight and the momentum is carrying myself upwards, I rotate, turning my body towards Bruce. Literally turning my back towards him. But what I want is this idea of heel drive to my opponent. Again, heel drive. Again, heel drive. One more time, heel drive. I want to be able to do it with both sides. So if I turn and I'm here, same thing. She's in high, leg comes up and back down. Leg comes up and back down. Leg comes up and back down. You know, what do you do with your hands? Keep them somewhat close to your body or extend the hand with the kick. So that's a basic yak chagi or side kick.